You see, what we've actually done there, we've just put in, you know, the broad outline of the top of the hill. Yeah. And a few little marks there to show where those bushes are in the background. Yep. And we've basically blocked out the outline of the castle. I'm so. astonished it actually does look a bit like what we're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go and put in the sky now. Right. Now, you see, whenever we look at the sky, up towards the top of the sky, you have a blue colour, but as it sinks towards the horizon, it gets a lot paler. Yep. So we have to show that when we're putting on the wash. And what we'll do, we'll have blue here and mm. then fade it as it goes down to, you know, various shades of grey and yellow, just to show You can see yellow in the there? I can, surely. Yeah. yeah. You see towards the horizon, there's a bit of crimson and everything there. <laughs> well, I'm looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it blends through, yeah. the yellow colour that we put on will blend through the blue colour. Right. And you'll get that lovely diffused feeling to it. But right. first of all, I want you to wet the paper in the sky area, but not over the whole lot, just uh -huh. in and around those areas. It helps keep the paint wet on a day like that. So off you go, just in a swirling motion, but not up towards the top, just okay. in the center. Right, like That's that. It. Yeah, and just keep going back into the bucket of water. Okay, and I'm careful not to go over the uh, the lines in the picture, yeah? Exactly, because if you bring the water below there, yeah. then you're going to have um, the paint following. That's fine, that's enough water. So I'm going now to, into the raw sienna and water mixture, and this is very, very dilute. Uh -huh. and I'm just gonna put some of that through. Like, you see what happens, it diffuses through it and helps to give a nice soft edge to that. Yeah. So some over there as well. And it's very important when we're doing this that we cut around that castle. Yeah. So if you bring the brush down the edge. Like that? Yeah, I'll just hold the board for you. That's it. So that, it's got to be quite precise along It has, because yeah. if the wash goes over the castle at all, then the That's sky colour will follow. And we have to be very quick because this is now starting to dry. Okay. So I'm going into the second mixture of crimson and neutral tint with more crimson in the mix. And that gives us that sort of very subtle purpley grey. Mm -hmm and blend that through. There you go. On this side, same. Yeah. And you see when that blends... See, but this doesn't look like sky. I mean, it looks very nice, but... Yeah, well, it'll finish up okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have every confidence in I you. This is, this is very impressionist. Yeah. I like it. Now, we're going to put on the blue sky at the top. Yeah. It's very important that you fill that along the top, first of all, and then yeah. pull it down between those other colours that you have on. So right. off you go, starting on the right hand, on the right. left hand side. Am I allowed to go beyond those lines then? Well, you can, but yeah. it doesn't really matter. You know, okay. you just keep it within that. If you just pull that across now, it'll, pull it across yeah, like it'll that, stretch yeah. the paint out. And then when you get down near this other just, side, just, work it down in. Okay. Exactly. That's a cloud? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it looks anything like this kind we've got, yeah. but I think it looks fantastic. We'll move on now to the foreground. Mm -hmm. But look at the green against the seaweed colour, the reddish brown seaweed colour, and then the water beyond. Mm -hmm. The green is really standing out in the sunlight today. And it's not all one shade of green. There's a lot of different colours in there. There's some red and there's some darker green. Well, that's one thing you can guarantee. You're going to get lots of green in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, people talk about 40 shades, you know, but I think there are a lot more than that. Now, let's move on and yeah. put this in with the number eight brush. Now, you see, that's just a mixture that's of... It's lime green, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And that's a mixture of Windsor yellow and a tiny bit of Windsor blue, just to give that nice vibrancy to there's it. There's blue in this? There is, yeah. Yeah, but we're doing it just along here. Yeah, but right up to this edge. Okay. Right, and you need to keep loading the brush as well. Okay. I'm going to mix a second colour to feed through that. Now, you're talking there about 40 shades of green. Watch this here whenever I put the second brush in. Mm. Look. You see what happens there? That's magic. You're getting... Yeah. Try that there, do you see? Just along that bottom edge. Yeah. So just follow these little yeah. Just nice sketches little here. lines, yeah. You see, at the end of the day, you're trying to give an impression of what you're looking at. And you have light green, dark green, and there's a bit of reddish green in there as well. That's a bit thick now. Hold on yeah. to loosen well, At the end of the day, what, what I'm having is a lot of fun. Well, Sean, it's all starting to come together now. Hmm. And you see, while the foreground's drying, we can move on now and do the background hills but we want to throw them back a bit, just to make them recede into the distance slightly. Yeah. So I want to use a weaker wash this time than we had been using on the foreground. So let's say the background one, you have five sections, and they're all divided by those little hedgerows that come down. Mm -hmm. Now each one is going to have a different colour. So yeah. we'll start with um, this bluish green, which is winter yellow, a bit of winter blue, and some cerulean blue into it. Yeah. And just take the brush there and get that in right down to that line. There you go. But be careful, not overly careful yeah. that you don't go over that line, but at the same time, try and keep it as much inside it as possible. We're taking it right down to the tower? Yeah, right yeah. down and cut very straight along the edge of the tower. Okay. Because if you let that green come over, yeah. then there's no definition to the edge there. Now, take this brush, the number five, and that's a darker green. Yeah. And put that one on next. 
bringing it down to meet that one. But if you just leave a little white space between the two washes so that it doesn't bleed back. Right. It's very relaxing, isn't it? How long does it take to do a whole uh, painting from scratch? It depends on the subject, but you know, the longer you're painting and the more competent you get at it, yeah. the less time you want to spend on it. Now. Oh, so field two is done. Yeah, and that's the yellow colour there for the one next to it. Yeah. Okay. It's slightly exaggerating the colour. What do you want, what do you think it should be? It's, I'm looking for it's slightly more ready ready colour. Yeah. So yeah. winter yellow and a tiny bit yeah. of crimson. That's better. Yeah. You can stretch that little bit of dirty wash through that, and it'll actually help the, te the, the texture. texture of it. You can move on now with this next one. Oh, I've seen a little bit there which I missed. Look, <laughs> can't let that one go. You're getting all fussy now. <laughs> <laughs> it's my painting. <laughs> there you go. Right, okay. this one here goes on now in the yeah. same way. All of this, yeah, yeah, this section. And when you have that field completed, yeah. we can move across to the right of the castle and put in the hills right. in the distance on the far side. What are we getting there, Shanka? Mm. The background hills are in and the hedges, you can see how that breaks up the background. Yeah, I think that field in particular is very well rendered. So we'll move on now and put in the water. And this is a very weak wash of uh, cerulean blue with a tiny bit of Windsor yellow. Uh -huh. Just to give that turquoise colour. I'll just test this first of all and see what... Yeah, that's, that's, what... that's not too bad. Yeah. So if you start over there and just pull it in along that far bank first of all and then you can broaden the stroke out as you come forward. But be careful not to go over this here as well. Okay, because that's seaweed. Yeah. I must say you're getting great control out of that brush now, you know, you're, you seem to be gaining I, in confidence all the time. I reckon that the more you do it, the more um, relaxed you get and the more control you get and at the same time speed up. There's a mixture of cerulean blue and neutral tint. I'm just going to put a few wind bars through that. Right? Wind, that. wind bars? Wind bars. You know whenever the wind blows the water, it changes colour. Well, yeah, I kind of knew what they looked like. I didn't yeah. know they were called wind bars. Well, well I call them bit. wind bars. God knows. <laughs> <laughs> they might be known by some other name. Okay. And another one there? Yeah, just yeah. another one. And it'll okay. blend through that. Now, we'll move on to the castle. Yeah. And that's going to be very simply done with two washes, first of all. Right. And that just lets you get a bit of texture into the, into the stonework itself. So starting there with raw sienna and water, I just want you to very quickly block in the whole castle area, yeah. except for the roof. So there you go, using the number eight, block the whole castle in as quickly as possible. Okay, what and it's coming down like that, yeah? Yeah. You can come Ooh, vertical or horizontal, Okay. because but it's stonework and it'll not matter which way you do it really. Okay. But just the quickest way to block it in, that's what I would suggest to you. Okay. I'll mix up a second colour that we're going to put into that and it's burnt sienna and a little bit of neutral tint. There you go, bleed some of that there through. Now put it down in vertical strokes and then horizontal strokes as well. And it just gives you that staining textured effect. Like that? Yeah, and you can keep building that up, you know, wash on top of wash, until yeah. you get the, the texture that you need. Now we need to get some of that dark black colour. It's a very strong dark colour towards the bottom. Yeah. Now I'm going to use neutral tint and light red for that. Just set it along there. What, what does neutral tint mean? It's a, Well, it's the name of a colour, but it's a very, very dark colour. It's like a dark greyish purple, uh -huh. um, if you look at it in this daily so it's, form. It's a, it's a good, good way of darkening colours. Well, we must leave that to dry now, because we've given that texture by bleeding those colours in, but we need to let it dry before we put any figuring on top of that. Mm -hmm. But we can move down to the boat. Which is the most uh, instantly colourful and eye-catching feature of the landscape. It's a real bright blue too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll start with the red at the top and... Uh, or the bottom, as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms up. Yeah. So that is a mixture of light red and crimson. And we'll put that on with the number five brush. Now, if you take it from there, mm. that rib there, and it only comes down as far as that line before the blue starts. Yeah. So off you go with that and just fill that over. Okay, so I'm following this line here. Yeah, pull it over to there and down to that line. Okay. Now we must move on to the blue. Now let me see, that's the blue there. But leave a little white line, a space. That's again to stop colors. it from bleeding. Reacting with the other yeah. colour. So put that on. 
and that comes along to that line and that's very dark then because that's the shadow underneath. Right. What about boats? Do you have any interest in them yourself? Uh, me and water just don't get on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, brought up in, uh, in India, in uh, Delhi, which is probably about as far as you can get from the sea. And what would your ideal holiday be then? You know, where you've travelled a lot yourself, where oh, would you? Definitely land based. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, my ideal holiday would be, uh, well, it is generally, um, trying to find somewhere really quiet. That's far enough. I can, that. Yeah, where I can catch up on, uh, on reading some nice books. Um, I'm a bit of a foodie, I like nice food, so um, somewhere where there is a nice um, local kind of food culture. Um, and these days with, uh, with two kids, in tow, course, you don't yeah. want to you don't want to do long haul. So um, generally in Europe, I mean, France, Spain, Italy, the usual suspects. Well, we can let the boat dry now before we can put in that dark shadow underneath. Because yes. again, if we try to feed that in there, it's going to bleed through the blue. That's really standing out now, isn't it? Yep. Because that looks like the only sort of man-made colour in the whole picture. The next thing we want to deal with now is the roof, the slate roof on the castle. Mm. We'll just mix up a colour here of cerulean blue with a bit of neutral tint. Right. And. Uh, I'll just put that on in a very pale wash. There you go. Yeah. Just pull the brush across. There should be enough there to do the whole thing. And uh, pull it across and then pull it downward in the direction of the fall. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And then you could put a few wee indications of slates on there using and a pencil. how would you do that? Well, <laughs> then a simple way to do it is just using yeah. a pencil. Oh, really? Yeah. And just pull it across there while it's wet. Right. Just like that to show that that's a ridge tile. Yeah. And then you have a few little slates there yeah but at the same time you want to overlap those mm. and keep the line of the edge of the slate coming in the direction of the fall you can trust me few, to do that yeah a few <laughs> just a few suggestions okay now. and a few suggestions is enough yeah but it's very important that you keep the fall going in the same in direction, the right direction all the time yeah. yeah yeah am i doing okay there that's fine if you do every single one it can get too cluttered yeah. So what we need to do now is come down and put in the detail of the windows and the doors. Yeah. And there's a few dark holes there. There were probably slats for um, shooting through at one stage. Yeah. And you can see that you can see the darkness in between or in behind yeah. the slots themselves. Yeah. It looks like it uh, was being defended at some point. Yeah. I'd say many, many times. Yeah. I think that's it. We're done. How did you find it yourself? Well, I've never done a watercolour uh, of any, any shape or form before. One of the great things about doing something like this is that it gives you an excuse to spend uh, a day just in one spot, yeah. and in a beautiful spot like this, and, uh, and, and just admire and uh, get to know the landscape. Listen.